I'm basically an art hermit. I'm in my office slash studio here 90% of the day, every day working. And after 10 years of this, the paintings tend to pile up. We just moved to this new home, so trying to move all these paintings without them getting damaged is a real pain, let me tell you. I mean, I can't wait to sell these paintings and get them out of here, but I've barely sold any of my art and the outlook on selling in the future was looking kind of bleak. Until now, lately I focused on building a network and I'm seeing some huge changes in my possibility for selling my work. I have real hope that I can actually sell my paintings now. So when I see such a massive change in a short period of time, it's obvious that this strategy is working and I need to share it with others. Hence this video, this is why I'm sharing with you. you need to get it out, wow. So listen up, take some notes, and get ready for some practical wisdom on one of the most powerful actions you can take to boost your art career, in my opinion. Yeah, I think it's really important though. You should listen, it's great. So this is the book that really changed things for me. It's called Your Music and People. It's by Derek Sivers. He's awesome. He's got multiple books. Please check out the book, buy it. All of the ideas that I'm going to share in this video come from this book and it's pure gold. And it's short with small, densely packed chapters full of wisdom. There is no rambling in this book, not like I do in these videos. He gets straight to the wisdom and ruthlessly eliminates any extraneous words eliminate the words packed with goodness see the description in the link below to get the book now let's get into why it's important to start your network right away why is this important it's really important let me tell you every person you've ever met has the potential to help you think about it if no one knows you or your work there is zero goose egg opportunity on the other hand if the gallery down the street or a potential buyer like halfway across the planet knows you then you have more potential but you have to keep in touch and stay on their minds. If you do, then there's a good chance an opportunity will come your way. Out of touch, out of mind. The difference between success and failure can be as simple as just keeping in touch with people. This is a lesson that I just learned and it's powerful because people can determine your success. And here's the simple math for it. If you know one person, maybe it's a gallery owner and you keep in touch with them regularly, then let's say that your opportunity is equal to one. That's your opportunity. Well, if you add a second person, wouldn't your opportunity multiply? But if you knew and you kept in touch with 10,000 people, then you would have tremendous amount of opportunity, right? Simple math. So if you have little opportunity, then you have little chance for success. If you have a ton of opportunities, then you have a great chance for success. It's like when people play bingo. When people go to play bingo, the first thing they do is they buy up a ton of cards so they have a greater chance to hit the right numbers. They've increased their opportunity. Van Gogh did something similar. He he found that for every 12 paintings that he painted, that only one was successful. So he started churning out a painting a day to increase his chances for success. Yeah, he worked his butt off. Crazy prolific. He did 200 paintings in Paris in two years. And I complain about a bunch of paintings. He only sold one. What did he do with the paintings? How did he move all those paintings? And in today's world, we see this every day with social media. If you had a million followers, I don't think you would need to worry about the rent payment. I know I wouldn't. It'd be nice, because then I could reach a million people, help a million artists. Man, I would love that. So with opportunities comes success. The obvious next step here is to start connecting with people. That's the practical aspect. You have to start connecting with people. Aim to meet three, three new people every week. With today and we're all connected through the internet and social media, I don't think connecting with three people is too hard. But the connection I'm talking about and Derek Sivers is talking about in his book is stronger than the normal 
tenuous connections that we have on social media. I'm talking about real connections, real people, right? Share the love. It will always be better to meet someone and create a real connection rather than just interacting with their digital self. You know, like on the phone, actually seeing them in person, you know, going out for coffee. Everybody loves coffee. No, I don't drink coffee, I drink tea. But still, I would love to have a tea with another artist. But I'm all about stacking things. So use every method you know to connect with people. In person, virtual meetings, social media, email, phone, website, carrier pigeon, whatever, use it. Just make sure that the communication is unselfish. Derek Sivers says that when you contact someone, it should be unselfish and sincerely caring about how they are. Sincerely caring about the person that you're meeting. It's really easy to show that you care. Just ask, how are you doing? What's going on in your life? Then see if you can help them in some way. Don't just message them asking for favors if they don't know who you are or you haven't talked in months. I mean, that's really insulting. Hey, I haven't talked to you in forever, but could you give me some money? Most people are so bad at keeping in touch that they will really appreciate you doing it. And most people love talking about themselves or complaining, but <laughs> complaining is great because you can easily identify, you know, something that they need help with. And that way you can actually help them, actually make a positive difference in someone's life. That's what we're trying to achieve here. When these bones are only bones, all that matters is how much we gave, how much we loved. Isn't that beautiful? When I'm dead and gone, when you're dead and gone, all that really matters is how much you've given and how much you've loved. So when connecting with others, be unselfish. Focus on giving and loving. Okay, enough of that. Let's get practical with this because you know I'm all about the practicality. You need to stay in touch with hundreds of people so you need to make a simple automatic system to keep in touch without relying on your memory. I know my memory's terrible. This is why you need a database. Because with a database, you can keep track of you know, private notes with you know your discussions with the people that you talk to and you can actually connect with. You can add tags, so when your list gets huge, you can find them easier. You can note their physical location. That way, if you're in a new area, you can look up who's near and have some coffee with them, you know, really connect. Uh, you can add a note of when you should contact this person next. This is the most important because continuous communication is what keeps you in their mind for increased opportunities. I do this digitally because the search through the database is powerful. If you have a database of 100 people, it's super easy to just search by their name and reference your notes, especially when they call you out of the blue. Before having this database, I was always wondering, who is this person? When did I last talk with them? I have no idea. Oh my gosh, I'm a terrible friend. Now I can pull up my notes and personalize the communication. You can actually talk to them about something that you talked about last time because you easily quickly pulled up your notes. Awesome. This is basically my second brain. I can't remember everything about everyone. I use technology for good, or I try to in most cases, to make real connections. Now let's get into some recommendations for databases to use. It gets a bit technical here, so bear with me. I'm gonna try and show you as best as possible. First, let's look at some essential aspects for a database. It needs to be digital, that's number one. As your network grows, searching, sorting, and filtering are just essential. And we want you to have a huge database. Next, it must work on multiple devices. You never know when you may need to update your notes on someone and having your entire database in your pocket or on your laptop and on your desktop is essential. And speech to text on your phone is a plus because you can just talk to your phone into your database and update it. Super easy. You can go analog with this by using a Rolodex. Who remembers Rolodexes? Or pencil and paper, but you're going to make your life harder in the future, especially when your database gets massive. So let's focus on digital. And I found that the easier the database is to use, the more expensive it is. For example, Monday.com and ClickUp are among the easiest to set up and use, but they can 
can get expensive. If you want easy on the setup and easy on the wallet, I would suggest ClickUp over Monday. But I believe they both have some free options that may be good for you, so check them both out. But the problem with these applications is that your data lives on their servers. Sure, you can export it all and move it to a different database, but I've found that none of these services use each other's data well. So I would export from one and then I would have to manually import into another. My database isn't huge right now, but manually inserting kind of sucks. And if you do a Google search on personal database, you're going to get a ton of returns. I would suggest staying away from CRMs, customer relation management, I think. They normally come with a ton of bells and whistles and that just complicates everything. We, we want to keep this simple, okay? Your database needs to be simple. If it's too complicated, you're not going to use it. Now, in his book, Derek Sivers suggests close.com, C-L-O-Z-E.com, and Monica, but both of them come with too much stuff. Again, I think those two choices are confusing. Keep it simple. My next suggestion is Notion or Anytime. So Anytime is brand new. I think it's in only an open beta right now, but it looks really promising. It's pretty awesome. These two have a steep learning curve at the beginning, but when you get the hang of it, there's really no problem managing either one. So steep learning curve just to learn it, but then it gets pretty simple once you know it. Notion is really nice because it's just a set of principles that you can build into anything you want. The best way to learn Notion is to do it yourself though. You know, step by step, figure out what you really wanna do and then go through it. Now I've created an extra video walkthrough on how to set up a simple database in Notion. So check that out. But while I was writing the script for this video, I, I did a test to see if I could set up a database in Google Sheets similar to what I had in Notion, and it worked. In fact, it worked so well that I decided to move over to Google Sheets instead. I mean, completely free, and it's just, you know, like Excel, right? Similar to that. I also created a video of how to do this also. Check it out, link in the description below. However you decide to set up your database, here is a list of things that you must track in order for the database to be useful as possible, most useful as possible. First, we need to prioritize our contacts. If we didn't do this, then we would be spending all our time every day on email, phone, social media, and connecting and not getting our paintings done. Paintings are still really important. Here is Derek Sivers suggestion for prioritization, and I actually use this as well. You have an A list. This is for very important people, which you contact every three weeks. You have a B list for important people and you contact every two months, two months, a C list for most people, most people will be here and you contact every six months and then the sad D list people that have been demoted and you only contact them once a year just to make sure that you have their correct contact information. How you organize individuals within the A through D list is completely up to you. Second, we need to track when we contacted them last. A simple date here is good. That's all we need. Third, we need a date of when we need to contact them next. Again, simple date. If I contacted Josh today and he's on my A list, then I would update the last contact date to today and change the next contact date to three weeks from now because he's on my A list. So I know when to contact him next. I could even put it on the calendar. Fourth, we need to track methods of contacting them. This could be email, phone, social media, website, whatever. I have email as one of the first columns in my database, phone later, and social media last. Remember, we want this communication to be as personal as possible. A phone call is obviously more personal than an email, but many people would rather answer an email rather than deal with a call out of the blue, especially a video call. Have you ever gotten those like video calls? You're like, who is this person? I'm not going to answer this. So email is a bit more considerate in some situations, but I use social media last for connections. Fifth, our notes. Every time we contact a person, we want to jot down some quick notes on the conversation. So keep this short and sweet. Hit the highlights of the conversation and that's it because you need to be able to look at it while you're on the phone with them or whatever and be able to get an idea of what you talked about last and then reference it in your new conversation or at least, you know, update your brain. So those are the five main pieces for data to track. A priority for each contact, A, B, C, and D. When we contact them last, when we need to contact them next, how to contact them, email, phone, etc. Notes about them and the conversations you've had as well. There you go. 
Do this and begin adding data from what contacts you already have. I added my family and close friends first because, well, they're the most important, right? The next step is to begin filling your database with people that can help you. You could add everyone to your database, but I don't think Bob the plumber is really gonna help you with your art career. I mean, Bob's a great guy. He's a plumber, he's a great plumber, but I don't need to put him on my database. The fastest way to fill your database with high leverage contacts is to attend an event. This is super awesome. So I attended the Tacoma Studio Tour a couple weeks ago and my database doubled overnight. My connection now is just fantastic. I've contacted so many awesome people. My database is full of amazing artists that have helped me tremendously in the past couple weeks, and I'm keeping in contact with them so I can help them as well. This is where I found Derek Sivers' book the most useful. It's a chapter called How to Attend a Conference. The methods work not just for a conference, but any event that you attend. It could be a party. It could be a studio tour like I did. Whatever. So here is how to build your network quickly and maximize any event you attend. So number one, before the event, come up with a super interesting sentence about your work. Now read the book here for some amazing suggestions on how to come up with an interesting sentence about your work. He's, Derek Sivers has got some great suggestions here. But the most important thing is to keep it short, keep it interesting. The only thing worse than a boring answer is a long, boring answer. And when you're at the event, for each person you meet, think about them and how you can help them. Have a conversation that is all about them. Keep asking questions. Be generally interested in their work, how they do it, what their biggest struggles are, their history, what materials they use, everything. Right after you connect with each person, jot down notes about the conversation. I would just go back to my car because I would visit each home and I would just speak to my phone and jot down some notes about that person. It took maybe seconds. And then I would go on to the next home to visit. And then after the event is over, or if the event spans multiple days, use the time in between to send them a message immediately. This is important. Connect the digital you with the physical you. Now I had a mask on for the studio tour. So in my email communication, I sent a photo of myself wearing a mask to help them connect the physical me with the digital me. I mean, they hopefully just met a ton of people. Help them remember your face. Send them a photo. Make a comment on something you guys talked about. Connect your physical self with your digital self. Again, when you contact them, keep the communication genuine. Mention something about the conversation. Ask them how you can help them. Keep it short, keep it genuine. I'm gonna keep repeating that. Keep it genuine, connect. It's so important. And remember, this whole method of connection is not about you. It's all about them. You're building real relationships and that starts with giving. Don't try to do business during the event. You don't have enough time. The real business is done in the follow-up, not the event itself. That comes directly from Derek Sivers. Great. Everything happens in the follow-up and the continuous connection. Remember this and you'll do well. Your database will grow amazingly and you'll connect with a bunch of people. So if you're an introvert like me, first understand that the terms introvert, extrovert, Extrovert and ambivert are just descriptions for how each of us get our energy. Introverts are energized by alone time, you know, a book, painting. Extroverts are energized by connection with others. And we are all really ambiverts, a mixture of each. We could do both. So if you identify as an introvert, push yourself to get out of your comfort zone for the event, studio tour, conference, whatever, then plan on recharging after the event with a good book or some personal time. But most of all, don't be a mosquito. Don't go into an event or a meeting just trying to suck something out of people. I'm going to say it again. It's not about you. It's about them. Be considerate. Make real connections. Give. I love what Derek Sivers says. You aren't pulled to success by destiny. You're lifted there by those around you. So true. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you, Derek. That's it. Now go out and use this. Use this system, build your database, connect with people. When you make this a habit, it's easy to stay in touch with hundreds and thousands of people. I guarantee that you will see a huge movement forward in your potential for success. 
If you have any questions about all that I rambled about here, please don't hesitate to reach out. I send out personal emails to everyone I get an email from. My purpose here is to help you become a better version of yourself and be a successful creator. This is my purpose. So hit those links in the description for more goodness, especially the book by Derek Sivers. It's awesome. Like, subscribe, all that jazz as well, and have a great week. See you next video.